Hello, and welcome to Channel 5 for Glensdale, Ohio. I'm the Preach Boy, Brian Prayson. And joining me for these holy vibrations are my brothers, Carl Godley. That, that's one of you. Ooh. It's Carl Godley. He's right there. He was just summoned. Wake I, up, I, Carl. C Carl. Ah, it is I, Carl Godley. I have been summoned to do the news. Yes. Who wants to hear about n b b b b b b traffic? Calm Why down, Carl. So this is a holy life. service for the Lord. Also joining us is Dennis Bible. I am Dennis. Listen to all How of Dennis. can I help you today? This they say that his, if if his parents got divorced, his name would be Dennis Bible Camp, because his because his mom's main name is Camp. Also joining us, it is Mike Apostle. Mm, my name is Mike Apostle, and I have a badass name and yes. a badass accent. Hear it, hear it, savor it. Can you hear it? It is I like warm oil it. going down your ears. Just like yes. the holy oil. And today, we are the Preach Boys. I'm the main Preach Boy, of course. But together we are the Preach Boys. And I'm picking up... Holy, 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 holy vibration! And today, we're going to be doing a good service. So I hope everyone is ready. So, my, my brothers. Seeing as it is, in fact, not Sunday. How about... We gather around and tell a little story together around this nice fire. I went outside. I sure do no love God. You don't sound like it. But see, you see, old Carl here is an example of how anyone can be changed by the magic of holy vibrations. For Carl used to be rough on the streets. Right, Carl? I guess. What do you mean, I guess? You were rough, and then we picked you up. You're not even actually my brother's <laughs> dick. Rude. You fucking cock. Anyways. And this is where we cut the commercial break. Holy, 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 holy vibrations. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I actually Welcome. really like that. What? <laughs> I really enjoy holy vibrations. <laughs> yes, I need to write the whole song of holy vibrations. I need to just write the whole thing. It's obviously, it's my song. Anyways, uh, this is episode 137 of the Mongerators Community Happy Hour. Vacant had an uh, asthma attack and his lung punctured on the way to um, Starbucks. And he's currently in a Frappuccino cup right now. He might come back. He might get out of that cup. The cup's right over there. We don't know if he's going to come out or not. We'll have to see as the episode goes on. I'm he's course... slowly oozing his way out of the cup, and uh, we don't know how long this is going to take. We're timing it's like, it, though. It's like ice cream. He's, he's freaking, like, slowly dripping out of that thing. And we have to wait until he all just settles in a big vacant pool around it. Anyways, like, you know the uh, blood elevator scene from The Shining? It's like that, but super slow. Super slow. Yes, I am the man for meals, and uh, I'm picking up holy vibrations. Anyways, joining me in this episode, you heard him all... It's the corn man. I am the corn man. He's the corn man. We also have the 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 morn can. <laughs> the morn can. That might be me. I think no. That it, is me. It could be whoever you want it to be. Morn can. Can you do the morn can? Can you do the morn can? <laughs> also joining us is the p sorn S sorn lan. Well, you gotta specify a bit. What? I'll roll with you, but... No, I was saying it's a corn can. You were the around. last. No, it's a freaking corn lag going there. Jesus Christ, you guys know this by now. You guys you guys know who we are by now. God unless you... It. If you're just tuning in and you're picking up holy vibrations, then you know that it's gonna be a good episode, everybody. I do say. <clears throat> so... You know, we gotta start in normal fashion here, and say, how how was the week, Mr. Cornfield? How was uh, the week? I don't know. It wasn't too bad. Uh, 
My car's doing good. My new car. That's real fun. Uh, I went home this weekend to house sit for my parents while they were up going to the uh, drag races in Topeka. So, uh, were they cars yeah, was... or men? Uh, cars. Okay. Although they didn't actually race any cars because it rained the whole time. Oh. <laughs> but uh, that's how it goes. Yeah. But, you know, it was fine. Uh, unfortunately, I had to take my brother with me. He can hear this when he listens to the episode. Yes. But, uh, you know, it was a fine. I got I got a I got a lot of writing done. So it worked out pretty good. Not too bad in the end. There you go. And I got Gassy home. Yeah. That that's a nice tale. Um uh what's your do you got a retirement home going right now? Uh no. Oh, okay. None none of the no no new ones anyways. <laughs> no new ones. I mean, uh, look, these projects drag on for years sometimes. Oh, really? Like the school, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, the, well, like the school one? Uh, no, the school one's done. Those are pretty fast. But like on a big project, like you know, you'll get it out, and then there'll be changes, and then you know they realize they don't have the money, then they got to do other stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a process. Oh yes, sounds like a fun time. But okay, that's pretty exciting. Do you ever do you ever use pencils and stuff, or are you full on digital? <laughs> now? I mean, I. I mean, we do write stuff by hand, but not like for actual product work. That's all digital. Tenzai no no Corin san. Listen to engineering anime where 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 Corin just walks up there and then he sits on his chair in the light Yamagi Yagang no wait no like no like Kira no no God who is that like L like L he sits in the light Yagami. Yeah, I mean, in the L style. I sit in a normal chair. The building. You know, I don't know what it is you think I do. Guys, we're we're a bilingual podcast, in case you were wondering. As you could hear, hear by Lego. We, we, we speak you know, English and drunk. We speak yeah. English and drunk, yes. Yeah. Who knows what we're speaking right now? Only a true pro could find out. But yes, that's that's a thrill. What about you, Mr. Mr. Nairbun? Not a whole lot. Um, the only real days I had off were spent mowing lawns <laughs> and playing Dragon's Crown. Well, I guess guess you got some uh, swim trunks that are getting ready, right? That was pretty exciting. I haven't bought the swimming trunks <laughs> yet, but I have bought you Americana t-shirts. Oh, hell yeah. I, I got my Tim shirt in today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ready. <laughs> Oh yeah. man, I wouldn't mind getting one of those. Yeah, I just got it on Redbubble. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was like, I got it again. I gotta get a Tim shirt. I just gotta do it. But uh, yeah, man, they, there's gotta be like official Tim Hortons merchandise though. Oh, hundred percent guaranteed. Well, I haven't really seen any. Well, you sometimes see someone who might wear a shirt or whatever. Obviously, the mugs and keychains. And my favorite is my uh christmas decoration they had in 2015 snow globes so on my tree there's a snow globe of the tim's restaurant i think that one's pretty badass oh you know it's nice makes you feel good warms my intestines on a on a cold winter's day you can just look at your tiny little tim look at my tiny tim freaking rip God tiny tim. bless us everyone yes but do you have anything else no oh wow that's really <laughs> short <laughs> no seriously it's been a short week no i gotcha i gotcha okay what, what about you mr lago no nothing much here just chilling chilling and dilling chilling and dilling yep. and drinking cheap wine <laughs> And drinking cheap wine that is actually pretty amazing. Valencia, España. One liter, which I auto which I automatically thought, yeah, this is going to taste like vinegar, but I'm broke right now, so I'm going to buy it anyway. It was only one euro thirty cents. It tastes really good. I like sweet wine. It is awesome. I haven't been drunk in way too long. Hmm. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> Okay, long is a relative term. Long for me, at least. My inspiration right now is Chuck Bukowski. Write while drunk. Edit while drunk. And stuff. Is Charles Bukowski the stuff they get at Trader Joe's? Nah, 
that depressing um because that's called like author? two buck chuck nope 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 author of some sort oh, or kind. Okay. yeah i've been drawing on the side but etc you know excelling inhaling human stuff oh excelling yes and as well. inhaling yes because he's totally human don't make I that am mistake human. E definitely human yeah. i am human what have you been doing, many more? Well, you know, there's there's been a couple of various fun details this week. Uh, a lot of a lot of messages I sent in the group chat this week. <laughs> nothing, nothing like too extreme, you know. There's uh, oh, you mean that giant robot that you fought? Yeah, I fought a giant robot. I I won, but we don't need to get into the details just because it's not in the news yet. But um, you know, the sound of a phone ringing triggers me really bad. Because I hate answering the phone. I hate when the phone rings in the store. I hate talking to people on the phone. I hate trying to understand people when they're just like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, what? But now when I go <laughs> when I go places and the phone rings, it really triggers me. So I was eating at like some sushi, sushi place or whatever, and the freaking phone was ringing, and I just immediately got this reaction of like, shut the hell up! I don't want to answer this shit. And I was like, wait, I don't work here. I've got the same problem with walkie talkies here. <laughs> yeah. It's just, <laughs> I hate having to listen to people on walkie-talkies. Right. But those are my dream, like Roger, Tango, Tango, Oscar, Mike, Charlie. All no, the other day, foresides. we did have someone call in, and it was someone on the walkie-talkie who pops up with, hey, someone wants to know if we sell cowbells. <laughs> and immediately, we had three different people doing their best Christopher Walkins. Ugh. <laughs> that's what uh that's what disappointed me when my first job at target and there were walkies i was like everyone must have like a code name for this right i'm gonna like hear the walkie will be like wolf man we have we have a 10-4 the, the checkout counter and then all it is is can i get a price check on this we need cash backup i mean you think it'd be a little <laughs> awkward for the customer if somebody got on the line this is wolf man i have a 10-4 wolf man 10-4 in, in, in g <laughs> We got, we got a situation here. Well, let's see. I We're remember it, some two. the first time I, someone answered a walkie-talkie, I swear I heard them say Wolverine. And I was like, oh my god, do they actually have nicknames? Then I was disappointed that they didn't. Although, when Target was closing and they were trying to like cheer people up, the one guy was going on the walkie for like movie trivia and stuff. Which was really weird. But, you know. It sucked, though. I don't like that kind of shit. But, um... I mean, yeah. it is a bit inefficient to have weird nicknames and codes when you can just be like, "Hey, it's Jeff." Yeah, but yeah, but it's it's fun that way. Yeah, but I don't know. It, it's good to have codes when there's three Brian's all using the walkie-talkies <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> you're Brian. We're gonna you're, impersonate the you're other Brian. Brian. You're Brian. You're Brian. Bry and Ann. Right. Well, what if you have an Anne on the team? Well, then she's Annie. I can, Annie? I'll I'll accept that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Is she okay? Is she okay? I don't Annie? know if she's okay because they came into the window. But uh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> also, you know, well now it's actually nice outside, and whenever it's nice outside, that means it's time for the white shorts and the white shirt, my favorite look. And uh, you know, we going on an extravagant hike. Well, it wasn't that extravagant. It was like 10 minutes of just going down, like, downhill. And then there was a nice waterfall. And we saw a beaver. I saw a beaver. I was so happy. These like... guys live in photogenic <laughs> places. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Not, you live Not in a everywhere. photogenic place. You just don't go outside. <laughs> I go outside. I live in the shittiest city in the whole Bundesland or whatever. It's a <laughs> fact. It got bombed to hell. So used to be a pretty place, but now it's just ugly. You. They never bothered guess who rebuilding. Built this place? The Americans <laughs> came here and rebuilt this place. Shitty four-cornered buildings with no style to them. Oh, God damn it, Americans. Are you sure you are not weren't in Eastern Germany? The buildings <laughs> with no style? Nah, Eastern Germany were the Russians. Those are pretty nasty, I, I must admit. But you guys did your job here as well. God damn it. Why did you, why did you win the war, man? There are beautiful buildings well, here. Rather the Nazis have won? He why he cares about architecture. That's his only passion in life. 
My soul dies every day when I see these buildings. No, actually, I, I have no excuse. It might be travel. a difference of things got rebuilt fast because they needed to be rebuilt fast post-war. Yeah, they did, yeah. Whereas there was a bit more time to rebuild stuff on the eastern block after the wall came down. Yeah. That's I'm... probably a lot newer architecture there. <laughs> They were they were made for the American soldiers. Hey, did you guys like remember? You guys... It was near a train station, so they bombed this race city to hell in comparison to others. So, do you guys remember yeah. when Obama was like tear down this wall? <laughs> when? <laughs> that was really cool. It's one of the coolest things he did. But, uh, no. I'm sad that we don't have the one British person here to talk about the royal wedding. Yes, exactly. Oh no, I That's thought I No, I thought I was I was going to call vacant an asshole for bombing Dresden, but I guess I can't do that. But yeah. <laughs> but no, the See, I didn't even know. People talk about like can't escape this royal wedding. I didn't even really know anything until like I saw the YouTube icon and then I was like, is the queen getting married again? <laughs> <laughs> I think her marrying days are way behind her. But fresh her husband. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys know the Aussie review channel? No. I do not. Aussie. It's like Aussie O double Z I E. Well, yeah, we and know he, yeah. he's from Australia and he does like he does like um skits where he narrates over a video and he narrated the royal wedding. He's just he's 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 class it's it's hilarious. You should check it out. Anyway, I'll just drop a link. It's that's how I saw the royal wedding. Yeah, it's pretty extreme. You know, they, they walk down an aisle and then they're like, I want to get married. And then the guys are like, okay. Damn. Right? Br brutal. Yeah, it was. I was really happy Thanks. for Josh when he got married. <laughs> we're, we're all very wait, happy for Josh. Wait, which Josh? Which one? No, he was there, right? The ginger guy? In the black up at the front with the chick in the white dress? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> no, no, Josh wasn't there. We didn't no. tell you that Josh is secretly Prince Harry? Yeah, you didn't know that? Serious? This explains so many things. This is why he hasn't been on so for so what long. What was gonna say? He's yeah. wedding planning. Yes, he all now he's on his honeymoon. Wherever the British Royals honeymoon. I don't know, the moon? They probably just honeymoon in like, in like the next town over, but they just don't tell anyone. God, do you think she knows that he likes anime? Well, she'll find out soon enough. What I mean, I hope so. You gotta get down the nuptials. Yeah, you lay out the plans. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like I had, like, way more to say. But now I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I got a new song on, on Cantala Music. It's called Vicarelessly. It's an exciting tale. I also got a new Twitter. <laughs> I got Twitter. <laughs> Can Cantala I, Music. I and it's already full of bad opinions. Well, okay, well, seriously, every time I hear the stupid Pay Your Way song, it pisses me off. I'm like, God, I hate this band. Okay, Pay Your Way, not their best work. Like, okay, but I... also, trying to say that Near Automata is only good music <laughs> because you're listening to other things. <laughs> okay, I know. <sighs> I was just being... I actually, I posted that because I knew it would bother you. It's working! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, like, actually, like, okay, The Offspring, I like that one song that was in a Bionicle stop motion. It goes like, it goes like, I don't You know, like, da 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 You know that one? Yeah. It goes like, I don't wait. It goes like, I can't, I can't, I never know what the freaking guy's saying in that band. <laughs> no, I, I bought the best of The Offspring CD a while back, and... That was another one yes, of those experiences where you just go through it and go, Oh, this was them? No. Oh, and they did this too? Oh, the song, oh, the song, the song, the song is All I Want. That's what I'm thinking of. I think that, yeah. that song's also in Crazy Taxi, so I think it's pretty all right. It oh, man. Like Crazy Taxi and the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games oh. both had magical soundtracks. Again, I know it from a stop motion video that a Japanese guy made of two Bionicles. It was called Bionicle Fighters. It was a pretty, <laughs> it was a pretty epic stop motion. It was from like 2006. It was like original YouTube stuff. Maybe we should talk about Biotube in this episode. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Freaking, I don't know. I guess that's all I have to say too, so...
we'll, uh, we'll we do the news, but I don't think there's any news. <laughs> I certainly didn't see anything. I don't know. Do it's you know anything? Pretty light this week. I haven't seen anything that's Wait. like yeah, actually cool I'll, I'll on do, the anime side. I'll do like a little lame jingle then. I don't know if there's any news. Oh yeah. T, T minus T minus. How long till we see the till the horrible Bleach live action comes again? Is it like 2019 or is it this year or is it? I don't know. Those it's things this usually year, get cranked out say. pretty fast. It's, it's gonna be this year. It's this year. Just Cause how I, long I keep till seeing... it reaches our shores? Yeah, because I keep seeing be... like little fluff pieces of like, here's a tiny thing related to Bleach. Hey, that movie's coming out this year. Okay, we're casting lots here. Someone's going to have to take the bullet. For the sake of reviewing, guys. For the sake of episode. I mean, I'm looking forward to watching it. I want to see how it goes. Are you serious? Yes. Of course you would say that. The person who enjoyed Berserk. It doesn't... I'm not not saying I'm going to enjoy it. I'm just saying it's got some potential. It's not worth just missing out of hand. I mean, it kind of is. But, you know... I mean, I'm an optimist. I, it's I, gonna I, get thrown on that large pile of live-action anime adaptations that come out of nowhere and mostly just get remembered at the bottom of a Wikipedia page going, oh, yeah. by the way, they, they cranked exist. this out in about six months. Yeah, pretty much. I don't understand. I watched Full Metal Alchemist and I don't understand. And then, you know, there'll be, like, anime YouTubers like, finally, we have new content. We can We can make fun of us now. Oh yeah, it's gonna get roasted by the anime tube community. Like, the anime and tube then... people could actually like legitimately like be like, okay, that was pretty fun. They'll make a video. I can't believe what they did to Bleach. It was oh my god, it was the stupidest thing in the world. This this thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I don't know. I am the guy who watched the entire like six Bleach musicals they made. Ugh. You watched the musicals? Were they good? They were fine. I mean, they were just they're like well, at least they were in like two thousand eight, all on YouTube. Oh. You know, they're fine. They're musicals based around Bleach. Is it? Is all it like, the stage is it shows are way? pretty fun. I haven't even read the light yeah, novels. Yeah, they, they had all. They had a great sense of humor. They made fun of the characters. They had stupid hair. They've what, done what those for like? like Persona and the Fate games. Oh. It's <laughs> there's a lot of those. Did they do like Showtime kind of songs or like? I mean, it's a musical. Like, yeah. uh, it's. I mean, I don't know. Showtime. Well, Showtime songs. is kind of like the the typical like like Broadway kind of. Thing, you know, like in every musical. A musical. People actually like the videos, like unironically. They have lots of views and, and <laughs> I'm checking like, them out you know, sometime. They're like really I, not that bad. I, and it's great to watch as they go along, the effects keep getting better. Oh, it's kind of fun. Like personally, I, I despise show tunes because they're always like the same kind of thing where they're just like describing the story in great <laughs> detail. Can Patrick but... sing you? <laughs> Don't send it sing you. Live reactions from local Mike Castro. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. But, uh, yeah, uh, Bleach Musical, yeah, pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, anything else? Uh, we, you were talking about something earlier in there. <laughs> no, I oh, didn't. yeah. Um, again, there's a lot more E3 leaks coming out that I don't believe a lot of it for Nintendo, but there's supposed to be a Star Fox themed racer, which. If that's anything like Diddy Kong Racing, that could be fun. It should be like Sonic R, the only good racing game ever invented. <laughs> you guys don't freaking talk shit about Sonic, Sonic R. R. Sonic R is a Sonic racing game where they actually just race normally instead of in cars. <laughs> you know, so you know, instead of a car, you're running around in Sonic. I mean, it's no Sonic Air Ride, but it'll do. <laughs> oh, Jesus, yeah. Or like, what's uh? Well, they had the Rugrats game on the PS One, I think. I think was it Rugrats? It was Rugrats on the PS One. Rugrats Racing or something like that. Or was it? No, it was Nicktoons Racing. Yeah. I mean, you can make anything into a kart racer, and it's a good game. Well, please uh, see like, Garfield Kart. Garfield Kart? Are you serious? I mean, yes, see, what that's was, one what of those games to get people on Steam as an angry joke. <laughs> oh, Garfield Kart. I mean, the best Phantom Menace game was still the kart racing one. Oh, that was was a Wait, are you talking about Super Bombad Racing or the Pod Racing one? 
There was one that was a cart racer. Like everyone had big bubble heads. Yeah, oh, super bomb bad. Why don't they? Uh, w okay, what would be like the, the the worst property to make a cart racer for? Like um, Schindler's List. Oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> is, is Sorry, the... Schindler. You could have saved one more. Is the uh, is, is... Well, that's more gold watches to free the Jews? <laughs> is the is the one girl in like the red coat like the mockable character? Oh man, I don't even want to think about the playable racers there. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know that, that that's a pretty bad property to make a cart racer of. Hitler has surprisingly balanced stats. Hey, that'd be no like the World War Two racer. Like I play as Mussolini the whole game, man. Oh man, you could play as like Erwin Rommel in a tank going around the <laughs> African course. What would Come what on. okay? Of course, Mussolini would be like a giant meatball with like spaghetti strands flying around, right? <laughs> Get ready like... for the race of Nanking. Oh, oh Jesus! No, 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 no. Oh no! <laughs> and the joke is dead. Let's go on. <laughs> That's a freaking good one. Okay, but like, what Wait, else? We're not finished insulting history yet. <laughs> oh God, I want to play. I want to play. <laughs> This is why you have I want to save. I want to. I want to save Karelia in a cart, please. Oh God. But uh, no. Um. Yeah, I don't know where to go for. I was gonna say like what else, but I, I don't. I don't think. I don't know if we can continue this segment. Uh. We might no. Well, about. that's the other thing is of all the announced news at E3, there's not a lot coming out, which Wait. brings up. It's been about six years since the PS4 came out. That's uh, reaching the end of its lifespan. They actually confirmed it according to uh, um, some YouTube channel, so I'm not sure if that's super confirmed. Yeah. It's reaching the end of its life cycle. And so are we going to see the PS5 that, this year, or uh, is it just going to be year. lean? It's I not heard an announcement there weren't going to be any new console announcements. As far as like the big numbers, that's the fake news. And, and that, that, that's what makes they... sense. We're, but I don't know. Uh, you know, how far away are we from the Sony PlayStation experience thing? Ugh. What is the like? What it's... is the life cycle problem? Like, I saw God of War. And I'm like, dude, not all games are at this level of graphic detail. Like, there is still room the, for the hardware at least. So, is it just like a business idea where they're like, ah, PS4 sounds old now. We're going to switch uh, to something else, or is it like, nope, actually, yeah. Got to be ahead of the curve. Honestly, the PS3 and the 360 lasting as long as they did a little bit killed the games on consoles for a bit. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, I'm way too be I'm way too too slow with this stuff, man. God damn it! I'm still on PS3. I haven't even got a PS4 yet. The way I want to play the exclusives, so goddamn good, so gorgeous. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I really, um, I really want to play freaking Bloodborne. I want to play De Blob. De <laughs> <laughs> Blob. Yeah, I I bought a PS4 so I could play De Blob and save Chroma City. Did you guys hear of Koj? Uh, wait, Kojima has been teasing a new trailer for Death Stranding, so that'll be fun. More mindfuckery. Here it comes. He's uh, always messing around with us. I just want to see what him and his best friends have made this time. <laughs> his best friends, Konami? <laughs> no. Mads Nicholson, Guillermo del Toro, Norman Dude, Reedus. Dude, Dude, I don't think he wants to finish the game because then he can't play with his new best friends. I don't know how he got those A-listers on his side. Oh, wait, well, he's a genius, but god damn it. This game needs to come out sometime in the century. Yeah, they should release that. Hey guys, did you hear that they're making Metal Gear Solid Four? <laughs> I guys, mean, you guys that came out like two thousand nine. You guys might have heard that they're making a Call of Duty game based in the Cold War. I think that could be quite interesting. That's a bit in the past, but guys, bring up a good guys, point about Call of Duty. Guys, I can't wait until they conclude the Halo trilogy with the brand new game by Bungie coming out soon. Oh yes, yes, yes. This is this is a reality I think, that I, I think they branded it as the last Halo game. Yes. They they branding yes. it as finish the fight. So go I wonder, deeper, Manimo. Go I wonder deeper. how it will go. They're gonna go and remember in Halo 2 
a conclusion to the story. Like Halo 2, it was a nice update to the graphics, but it was a bit too short. But yeah. 3, I'm looking forward to 3, man. I can't legit weird. having flashbacks to high school. This is weird. <laughs> I can't wait until Halo 3. Guys, what do you think will happen in like Halo 3 multiplayer? Do you think that they'll have like some kind of cool like theater mode or like okay. something where you can like make maps? I'm not really scared of uh, worried about the, the the multiplayer or anything. They could my, screw it up as as far as I'm concerned. I just want the story to be good. Like my my Halo prediction, 3. my prediction for the story is that it will end with with Master Chief being on a, a ship and he's gonna drift away and everyone will think he's dead. Nah, but that's what they did no? last time. You don't think that's gonna happen, guys? I think that Johnson might die. Actually, I have a feeling. Yeah, but real talk, I'm betting they are going to put Halo 6 out this time. Oh, fuck. Oh, for sure. Halo oh, 6, sake. like, they, they have to... Just shoot it in the head, man, they, please. They have to have a campaign of just Master Chief and not even bother with, with other shit this time. Cortana fell in love with Chief? What the fuck is that, man? I, yeah. I mean, that's been building up for, like, the entire of the series. But it wasn't supposed know. to be, like, in your face. It was supposed yeah. to be, like, fan fiction material. Nobody makes fan fiction about shit that has already happened. Yeah. Like, like, Ruki and Ichigo now is fan fiction for me. God damn you, Don't Kubo. Don't make a girl that's promise only reason you, you can't keep. Maybe you should have hope for the, uh, the Bleach. Uh, live action. Oh, they're going to correct save, that for you. Correct yeah, because didn't they just get rid of Orihime and Chad She's in that She's not movie? in it. Oh, yeah, well, there you go, Lego. The Bleach live action is the best anime live action that's happened in ages. It's like it's the it's almost of as new good age. as the Prison School live action. That exists. Yeah, that exists. Yeah, it does. Okay, I'm going to be morally outraged as I Google this. Google well, this live. How it's... could they make a live action of such a such a preposterous show? That's well, it's not it's, good it's for not the like they, It's not like they did it. Did it? Did it worth noting? It's not, like, it's not like they did it, did it well. If they mess up the character that I'm thinking of in the live action, then it, there will be a riot. Have, everyone knows the character you're thinking of, Lego. Doing, it's, it's worth not... doing it poorly and cashing in on it. <laughs> They're not as big as you'd hope, Lego. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fuck is the point then? <laughs> I'm looking at the, this cover and, like, you can't make it without this cover. No, but they did it. Was, those mountains need to be in the background. They frame the picture perfectly. I mean, again, they they, they made a live action in Nana Takaru as well, so they can do anything. Do they yeah. actually make good live actions of um, idol shows? Manimal? Uh, there aren't any because there are real idol groups. Like you know how Love Live, the all the voice actresses actually like perform as Aquas and, and shit. Like they they go out and they do things. I was just gonna say it's not necessarily something you want because do you remember the Spice Girls movie? No, that doesn't exist. Well, that that's exist. That, that's different because the Spice Girls are like you know real. <laughs> are you talking about Spice World available now from the Criterion Collection? <laughs> Almost as good as Kiss Meets the Phantom <laughs> of the Park, but not quite. <laughs> hey, hey, no, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park is worth watching because of just like how ridiculous it got. You know, it's it's a, it's a fun movie. But uh, yeah, I guess that's that's our whole news section. It was you know not a lot of news, but like frick, what else are you gonna do? You guys want to fight me? You want to come over here? You want to go to? You want to go and fight vacant because it's his fault. Go over there and duel him. Whoever beats him gets his. Uh, he probably has a nice sock. I imagine vacant would be the kind of guy who have like a sock collection. Like he probably just have like a lot of like, kind of like weird and, and, and socks that. That people will, like buy for him, and you have like ones with like pugs and and like hearts and like just weird things on them. Like I imagine Bacon is a weird sock kind of guy. Not because he's into socks, but because he has just a lot of like weird long socks. He 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 does own Cookie Monster socks. See, I can confirm that. I freaking told. I don't you. know about the rest of his socks, but he definitely owns Cookie Monster. <laughs> like Bacon, Bacon just gives me the vibe of a guy who just <laughs> owns a lot of weird hell. socks. Like sometimes Vacant seems something. like the guy who bought a pair of weird socks once, <laughs> and then like family relatives just go, "Oh yeah, you're the weird socks guy now," yeah, and like, against just, his will, just everyone just once. keeps giving him weird socks. <laughs> no, he just did something once. Everyone's like, "Ah, man, he's a weird sock man." He's like, he's like, "Oh, mate, I just, I just, go, I do say I had socks once." <laughs> I'm not. I can't. I can't impersonate him. Grimy mate, I said I had. 
We gotta order him some royal wedding commemorative socks. <laughs> no, listen, I, there has to be some. What? I guys, I'm disappointed what because socks of I lost one. Of, I lost one of my Love Live socks. One of my Canon socks. So now I only have one Love Live sock. I'm really disappointed. I'm and you can't just go with one sock. That's weird. No, definitely. But I'm really, I'm really disappointed in myself for losing that. But. You know, life carries on. Just like this show, we're going to carry on. So I'm going to do the little little news outro theme. Good guy news. Okay, that was pretty good. Um, well, I think we have somewhat of a topic of discussion this week. But we might as well talk about what we've been watching. Because I feel like this segment will be really short. I haven't been watching anything. What about you guys? Uh, Megalobox and Hinamatsuri are still good. Westworld season two feels weird. I have watched one episode of that. That is all. That's pretty thrilling. It's quite thrilling. What about Corn of the Cob? I've watched Jack and Shit. He's watched <laughs> I was... Jack and Which Mom season? Which season? Which season? You've been watching Jack and Shit. For no, a the while. compilation movies. Uh, all he did was I watch got Jack time and for that. Jill. I can't watch all 500 episodes of Jack and Shit. Are you kidding me? Freaking, there's this one Adam Sandler, like, you know, Adam Sandler makes all those Netflix movies. Uh, I watched one of them, his most recent one, for some reason. It was, like, the day before. The, it was a movie about, like, his daughter was getting married to, what's his name? Is it Chris Hart? Or... Is that is that who it was? Chris H Hart. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Is Chris Hart? What does he look like? Him? Oh, I think. It... I Wait, don't I'm think gonna, so. I'm gonna look it up what the movie is. I'm gonna look up what the movie, the week of, which which features uh, Chris Rock. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. Okay. See, I got we the Chris the part. There. I got the Chris part correct. <laughs> and no, you're right. Kevin that Hart is, is like. Walmart off-brand Chris Rock. <laughs> what about Chris Hart? Wait, wait, guys, wait. Chris Hart, Chris Hart, he, he gained popularity as a J-pop artist. Are you, what the fuck? He was born in California. And he, he, he's a vocalist of a visual Kai band. Chris Hart is a J-pop artist born in California. <laughs> This is bizarre. <laughs> this is new. We invented a person and then willed him into existence. He actually he's exists. California. He actually exists. He, he's not important enough. The creative, to have, the creative mind of. He's not important writers. enough to have a uh, picture on his Wikipedia page, unfortunately. But oh my god, like the song titles are all in Japanese. Holy shit. This guy's legitimate. Chris Hart exists. God damn it. He's a brother from it. another mother. Yeah. Wait, and he sings Japanese? Come yeah. on, this is unfair. <laughs> can't believe Chris Hart exists. Love Story What Totsuzen is my favorite song now. Love Story What Totsuzen. Oh my god, this is amazing. I can't believe we found freaking Chris Hart the J-pop singer. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Anyways, this this movie the week of it, it's like you know Adam Sandler's Netflix movies are basically like they're like hey hey Adam you got to be in this movie and he's like I'll be this character again like you know you know that character right the guy is like nah I mean, from what I know he basically just films all his movies in Hawaii with his friends so he, uh, who's losing here this, this one is like in like freaking New Jersey or something like that I don't know. Is it Jersey or is it Hawaii being called Jersey? I, I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's one of those movies where he plays like the, the, the dad who's not cool. But he, he talks in like his, his one voice that he, he uses a lot. It, it, it wasn't very good. <laughs> no one was surprised by that. Man, I, cause I still have a soft spot in my heart for Adam Sandler. I do too. Like again, I talked about it. Like, he rain. looks tired. Oh, he does. But like... When you go, like, Rain Over Me is such a good movie. Like, that's a really freaking good movie. And he's really freaking good in that movie. You know? What What happens to Sandler and Steven Seagal that makes him so bad? Because 
I only learned to What's hate sad both of them because other people shat on them. Because I enjoyed wow. their movies. I think I really well, Steven Seagal is legitimately Before... a terrible person. Steven Seagal goes for quantity, not quality, and that's hurt him in the long run. Yeah. Wait, because I think Adam like, Sandler just they keep everyone wants him to do his same old thing. And I yeah. think he's sick of it. But every once in a while you get like a punch drunk love. Or again, rain over me. Yeah. And because again, when you watch a movie like that, you're like, wow, he's actually you forget that he's a good actor just because he's mm-hmm. in, in all those movies where he's just bored, you know? Like I watched uh, Funny People, which oh. is not Funny. a humorous movie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's basically just a movie about Adam Sandler is tired, and here comes the new comedy crew of how oh, f- weed man jokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh? Does, does... I forget his name. Seth, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh? Does Jim Carrey have like a serious movie that's like that? Or oh yes, uh, oh killer. several. Yeah, that's right. But man, he's also a bad person who's losing it. <laughs> wait, wait, why? Not Jim Carrey. Oh man, there's like like Mel Gibson, bad or worse. <laughs> Just. He is unwell. Yeah. God damn it. Freaking. I just want there to be Grinch too, but apparently that can't happen. Well, we're getting oh, the Benedict getting weird... match voiced cartoon. Oh, I forgot about that yeah, shit. There's the weird CG one coming. Oh, but it's not even a Christmas movie. It's just about the Grinch being mean to people. Yeah. What? Didn't you see the trailer? <laughs> I have not. Yeah, it's I'm literally... just really not. It's literally just about him being mean. It's not even a Christmas movie. It's just like he just messes with people. What? Yeah. Uh, like he, he just goes to like the supermarket and just like just pulls pranks, you know. But it's made by the guys who did Despicable Me. Yeah. It's so. The same movie. <laughs> it's the same movie. It's also made by the people who made the freaking Minions movie or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Look, they had to uh, fulfill a soul debt for that thing. For the soul debt for the Minions movie? Those guys are yeah, also all making Despicable the Me's. Mario movie. Oh, the Mario that de- Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, is the Mario movie just going to be an actual Wario movie? <laughs> and it's just Despicable Me, but Wario adopts three cute orphan girls? <laughs> they're just going to release uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie again, except this time they're cg Bowser. Yeah. <laughs> okay, honestly though, for in terms of marketing a cute creature, Goombas are gonna be the new minions. You know, that's yes. very I'm possible. Kinda cool with that. Yes. Well, yes. yeah, it makes sense because already like Goombas are already nice kind of like Goombas. a like Fat a like Goombas. there's a lot of like you know like Goomba plushes and stuff that you I might see. You might see <clears throat> YouTuber videos where they have their Mario accessories in the background. <laughs> I love Mario. I played one level i've got all these orphans i was the ultimate poser because i got like on when, it, when there's club nintendo and you can order stuff i suddenly realized this so i got like for my wii and stuff like the serial number and you get points or whatever so i got like yeah. mario shoelaces even though i never beat one of those games or anything but i still had the shoelaces I felt pretty cool, you know. I put them on the Converse shoes. I was walking around. I was like, "Look at my Mario laces." <laughs> no, I think I've the never most I got out of that was a Legend of Zelda puzzle that never actually showed up. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, I also got Mario folders as well, which were very useful. Hmm. Yeah, one of those was like my comic folder back when I made comics in school and didn't actually pay attention in school. Instead, you know, I just have my Mario <laughs> folder where I make my comics and stuff. You know, teachers are okay with it. They'd be like, you're making your comics again. That's cool, kid. Just don't fail. <laughs> you know? I was actually really lucky in that regard. The, the teachers were like, you know what? This is nice. This kid's doing something. If only they knew. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I really want to do a whole episode about Chris Hart now. Like, this is, like, really fascinating to me. You know who also pops up on that search 
is Christopher Art, the guy who made all those how to draw books that oh. <laughs> the guy don't, who saw one on anime me, in the nineties. Oh shit. Oh shit, that guy. Please don't shit on them. What do you mean don't shit on that guy? He's terrible. But he's good. I mean, no, come no, on. He's not. He's good, but he knows who buys it, and he's trying to make bad anime nerds buy his like, stuff. When you look it up, you're like, draw manga now, don't shoujo say, style, shoujo it, basics, say. chibi okay, what furry. Do you think of... God, this is bad. But what do you think? Is he okay? Mark Crilly though. Mark Crilly, please, please. Yeah. Okay. He's good. Okay. Fine. Okay. Then we're good. Okay. Shit on heart as much as you want, as hard as you want. Like, all those guys do their Western-style thing and just are trying to understand what the kids are into. It's still the same drawing basics, but it's just bad imitations of anime. Hey, speaking of bad imitations of anime with the Western style, y'all see this fucking Thundercats reboot? Oh, God, no, Christ. no! They're trying to do it like an anime style? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just Steven no. Universe. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, he's not kidding. Thundercats no, roar. Are you joking? God. What the shit is this? Are you kidding me? Don't, don't, don't even look at it. It's just it's <laughs> not <even laughs> funny. Why it's did not okay? Funny. Remember, re remember when Cartoon Network had like shows with like different art styles? Yeah. Yeah. yeah not anymore. No. <laughs> They're yeah, going for the lowest common denominator. No, God, no. Thundercats. Like, again, like, I mean, there's a classic thing where you see, like, the one shape of face and then all the characters look like that. You know? But it's like. It's just. It's God, a bad just... style. Remember remember when there was distinct styles that felt like the artists? Remember how Rockwell's Modern Life and Camp Laszlo looked like it was made by the same guy? Man, I was looking over, like, the old ABC Saturday morning lineup where it was, like, the Weekenders and Recess and oh, Pepper Ann and everything was just, it had its own personality. Yeah, yes. well, yes. Again, even, like, you know, like, all, like, the Nicktoons and stuff back in the, in, the, in the old days. I don't know if the Nicktoons look like now, but it's, like, like, what what is this? Like, why are they doing this? Like, why... Like, Thundercats, who even gives a shit about Thundercats? Like, that's like, you might as well make a freaking mask live-action movie at this point. You know? Thundercats is actually pretty in there, like, in the memory. It's like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not, yeah. not super, super famous, but it's it's there, man. It's in, like, it's in they did a more Ninja Turtles is super, super famous. Like what are you Avatar talking about? Yeah, like Ninja Turtles is old, okay? Yeah, but Ninja Turtles is carried over. People it's like old, wear it on their but shirts. It's had and... like how m two Michael Bay movies? Yeah. Yeah, I know, but but you were nervous about the 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 remakes, right? You were like, oh, would this be good or not? It, well, it wasn't. Yeah, the it turtles wasn't, still look ugly. It, it, yeah. it come to a new age. That's what I mean. Like the, the Thundercats turtles, as well. It's not guys... exactly super famous, but. It's also one of those shows where you're like, don't make a shitty remake, please. <laughs> shout out, <laughs> shout out to the show. shout out to the 2007 TMNT CGI movie. That one was weird. I didn't watch. I didn't watch it. 2017, <laughs> right? Magic. Patrick Stewart was there. Actually, He's weird. I only remember I it because it. I, I I loved the trailer, but I, I how was it, Manimal? Oh, I only remember it because, like, back at Montana's barbecue place, I, uh, I got a, a TMNT cup that I used to have my pencils in. So that's the only reason I remember it. <laughs> Good old Montana's. I, I like the trailer. Yeah. Freaking shout out to Montana and Montana's. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess, obviously, we haven't watched anything. You know, there's been nothing like that going on. Well, if yeah. you ask me, then you know that I have watched The Drifters, and it has an awesome opening sequence. Wait, you watched something? That's new. Yes. Uh, I took Vacant's advice and just watched something at last, finally. And how the far Drifters, did you get into Drifters? I finished it. God damn, I'm so happy it exists. I was like, please don't censor this part. Please, please don't censor this part. They did not censor it. I was like, hmm, okay. Okay, looks like new school anime hasn't lost its balls quite yet. Okay, but this part though, censor definitely, they did not censor. So I'm like, you know what? I'm okay on this part. What about the characters? They were good. I was skipping the theme song up until episode five, 
And then I was like, okay, I'm going to take the final dive now. I'm going to listen to the theme song. Oh God, please, 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 Lord. Just just one good theme song. It was an awesome theme song. Boy, the one thing nah, about nah, it is nah, it's nah, from... Nah. The theme song is from this, like, no-name little group, or maybe it's just one guy out of Detroit. Seriously? They're not Seriously. a famous, like, Japanese, like, band that knows English. Like, like No, they're uh, this tiny little thing out of Detroit. Yeah, like when Chris The Hart... whole album that that song's out of is actually pretty good, though. God, I'm getting you can the find album. find it on Spotify. I'm getting the album. I love this show for... I know that it will never, it will never serialize the whole thing. Like that's impossible because even the manga isn't finished and whatever. It got the arcs that I needed to be done. The art is unique. They tried something different, and I love the theme song. Like from Detroit, you know what? I'm, I'm going to listen to that one. I really enjoyed Drifters. Basically, it's. Do you guys like it? Because I was also not here for a while. I haven't listened to. Netflix. Oh yeah, we had a whole thing going. It was good. Oh, it had Jesus, right? Yeah, well, bad Jesus guys. is the bad guy. That guy's straight up Jesus. That guy's Jesus. That guy's Jesus. Excuse me, at the preach yep. boys, we never say Jesus is the bad guy. Refer <laughs> to our episode, Jesus is a Saint in- Antagonist. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also watched um I'm starting recreators. Like I'm at no not starting. I'm at episode fourteen, the one after the recap episode. Why do they still do recap episodes in anime? They need to fill time. I have no idea. It's just like, why? It's like, why? Guys, we anyway. don't have an episode. What are we going to do? I know what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to recap it. Yes, yeah. we need to do that on Manga Raiders Happy Hour. It's actually pretty necessary because, like, hundreds of episodes now. I finished Ghost in the Shell Arise. Oh, thank God. Yes, they pulled that one off too. Happy. And now I'm watching Legend of Galactic Heroes. Yeah. In one single episode. You know, this is why I like old school anime. In one episode, they set up the entire universe. They showed me all the characters that I should be interested in. They managed to show one tragic event, one epic event, and yeah, I love this anime. It's going to take a hell of a long time to watch, but I'm going to watch it as well. And I'm going to watch Fist of the North Star next. Because there is a man who walks through buildings. That's pretty cool. Oh my wa. Mo Shinderu. Nani? Also, the more episodes you watch, the more you'll become like that anime snob. I, nah. You're gonna I'll be you're, you're gonna become fat and Greek. No, if I watch Fist of the North Star, I will become the manliest man ever. My balls will sweat. Yes, I will become manly. <laughs> That's not exactly something you want. <laughs> you know how it goes. Oh my gosh, dude. Uh, uh, Ui Makupu. Roskitas. That means beach and tan. Yeah. Now the more you know. Do we uh want to get on to the suggested topic? Yes, we have a topic brought to us by the the the, the blowing cor- cornfield in the background. <laughs> what would that be? I'm a cornfield. Corey, Cor- uh, Cor- this- Cor- have you ever worked on a farm? <laughs> I mean, I grew up on a farm, technically. Worked on one before? Like, I mean, not on- like worked, worked on one. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I held my grandpa around when I was a kid, but, you know, I was never like a farm hand. If that's what you're asking. No, I'm not a farm hand. Nah. No, not it's- like that. Corin is an American shonen protagonist. Confirmed. Um, okay. But anyway, I remember uh, working on my grandpa's farm. Yeah. You're also I remember the time that we got to hook up a dead cow that was struck by lightning and nah, fell into a, a chain and drag it into the field? <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite kind of America. <laughs> Did, did you happen to have to fight in a war like, like the you far to, war? Like, uh, like say, pa. No. Did you have to fight someone named Ryan or something like? Where wait, are you wait. pulling this from? Wait, do you mean that he had to fight in a war so we have to say goodbye because he has the old humble farm, and then when he's in the war, he's thinking back to the humble farm? 
No, no, no. He's like like all the American movies. Like there's this honest. Yeah, that's what farm, I mean. Farm he's from the farm. Dude. Yeah, but he doesn't want to go back. Not necessarily. He fights bravely, <laughs> and then he has to go back. I want to make it in the big city. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit on this farm forever. Oh, so he goes to war <laughs> because of that. You have a better well, way yes, to get I got out of a Kansas. girl back home. I can't wait to see her. That's America's version of sitting it's at the funny. back of the classroom and having dyed hair, you know? It's, you know, in Africa, we had life. So. It's funny because uh, in in Call of Duty World War II, the whole story is he's a Texas guy who just wants to go back home to his freaking house in the country and see his girl and, and stuff like that. So it's the exact same kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with houses in the country and seeing your girl. No, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying that's, it's it's funny because that's a movies, true. Except that guy dies. It's funny because it's like a true stereotype yeah. of those kind of movies. Where it's like, never show a picture of your girl back home. Yeah. You gon' yes, die. That is a death flag. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. You serious? I can't wait to get back to the farm and, and have her apple pie. That wasn't an innuendo. She just makes really God, good pie. I know it wasn't good. <laughs> she just makes really good Man, the good girl pie. I got back home, she is quite unattractive. <laughs> yeah. I don't carry her picture because I don't much like the looks of her. Okay, that is a good word. It's brought me <laughs> luck so far. Yeah. She's got a wonderful singing voice. That's exactly what the self is. Hot damn can she cook. <laughs> okay, babies, what's the topic? <laughs> okay, so this topic came up to me randomly. And this was the f- it says it's sort of a writer's thing, or I guess whatever, story creation thing. What is the first story you ever came up with, like, of all time? Like, search back into those dark depths of childhood, and what was the first time you had a creative spark to make anything? And all what right. was that thing? Well, since you introduced the topic, how about you start since you've had the most time to think about it? Yes. Well, I will, uh, let's think. Because there's two contenders, but I think the first option I actually have, I was probably in, like, second grade or something. So I was, like, six, I want to say. Yeah, six or seven, however you're old you are in second grade. And the first story idea I came up with, like, and, of course, I was, like, six or seven, was a sort of 90s-style sitcom where all the characters were the numbers 1 through 10. That's pretty epic. I know, right? It's a sitcom? It was a sitcom. Number 1 was the dad. Number 9 was the mom. The overbearing father-in-law was the number 10, who was also the mayor of town. Number 2 was their child, or like their baby child. Three was their, like, middling son. Uh, they had an eldest daughter who was number seven. Her best friend was number six, who was a hippie. Holy and shit, you know the story inside out. Uh, I don't remember what the rest of the numbers were. I think eight might have been seven's girlfriend. I don't know what the fuck five was doing. <laughs> but they yeah, all had, like, col- like their own colors, what, and they were all, like, drawn nine in, again? like, sort of... Nine was the wife. Ah, okay. God damn it. Okay. But they all had, like, their own specific colors. Colors and they were like drawn in like cartoon styles because that's how I could draw that days. Basically, they were just nut- like bold numbers with little stick legs and arms coming off of them. Oh. Do you still have documents? Do you still have hard copies? Like, do you still have? I the... don't. I no. I'm sure I do not. Oh man, not even one surviving scrap like in a carton somewhere. Please, if they I love were, the story, be, man. If they I were, love... they'd probably be on like my notes from second grade, which I guarantee you I did not keep. Unless one just got like stuffed away in a drawer somewhere and never found, but I'm pretty oh, sure they're man. all gone. I didn't need to have my notes on what two plus two was. Are you sure? What is two plus two? Five. I gotta check my notes. <laughs> you gotta check my notes. <laughs> just I haven't got calm. this addition thing down yet. How is no. this? How has your view evolved over your story? Like, are you looking at it with? burning shame and you want to com- commit seppuku or i you... think it's pretty good for an eight-year-old <laughs> all things considered yeah that's a pretty advanced concept really i mean granted it was just 10 characters in a sale in a 90s style sitcom which i yeah. was very familiar with as being a child of the 90s yeah. but um 
it actually sounds interesting. I, I actually had a pretty dystopian idea of like why are they numbered by numbers. They're totally being monitored by a dystopian. big brother sort of thing. And but they're literal the sitcoms, numbers. Like they're only called numbers and that's why it's a sitcom. It's like, you know, like I'm sort of like, um, what is that thing? Um, don't hug me, I'm scared sort of situation. Where like the uh. team... Tam, tam, tam. But no, I think it was sounded more innocent than that. I mean, yeah, pretty innocent. I mean, I'm just surprised that I, I managed to. I don't know why, but I, just staring at the numbers one day, I'm like, oh, they all have personalities and they're a family because, of course, they are. Seven yeah. year old me. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know. And I don't know where the colors came from, but blue was t- two was always like light blue, yellow was you, always yellow was always you one bastard. color, three you was bastard. like orange. You have an ability. Are you synes- Do you have synesthesia by any chance? Uh, is that the thing where you see things yes, and they have yes, personalities? Yes, yes. No, and colors. I um, mean, you see a number that has a color specific. I mean, you maybe. Same with your freaking career card, damage, you bastard. I mean, I'm not saying it's out of the question, but I can't. I want to say yes. I think Thanks. maybe everyone has a touch of it potentially. I mean, it just seems natural. And it's not like you could, like, spit out a number, like, any number, and I'd have something. It's just the 10. If that makes any sense. Yes, it does. All right. Well. Lego, what is your first story you can (laughs) recall? Thank you for phrasing the question in a way that won't embarrass me, because I definitely won't remember the first story, but... I had a shared universe thing going on with my brothers. It was um, called Madland. And we did, the formula was basically mad plus animal. And I was mad cat. And my bro was mad lizard. And my uh, other bro was mad bird. And these these, um, nations all had their own personalities and stuff. The cats were lazy people who were crazy people as well and stuff. I guess they they made they made medicine that could make them breathe in space. It was insane, man. And then there was like my brother, the mad birds, they were intelligent, conniving, sneaky bastards. He's still a sneaking, conniving bastard. Yes, Joseph, I said that. Huh? You mad, bro? I'm on a podcast, by the way. Are you mad, literal, bro? Yeah. And then there was mad lizard, and those guys only smoked weed, so we had. It was it was an extended universe sort of thing. We didn't write anything on paper, but we always went on the veranda, and we laid out. We just laid out these um, what's bigger than A4, A3, yeah, A3 sheets. Cello taped them together and then laid them out, and then drew a drew a map of sorts like an overhead view. Not really a map map, but just boxes and stuff to see where the cities are and stuff. And then we'd just be there for hours on end, like dude. I do not remember. Like, it was a long time. And it was fun as hell. But writing stuff happened later. Those weren't really my first stories. But the really first experience in making stories was crafting a combined universe with the brothers. Other than that, there was another one as well. And it was based around fighting games and stuff. That was fun. Good times. Yes, good times. Good times indeed, right? Yes. Okay, well, let's... The issue with me is I was a very uncreative child, so the, all the stories I made were about things I like. You know, I've said it before, but I might as well say it again, because, you know, it's probably been a while. The first comic I ever made was in JK when I was, like, five. And it was, you know, it was about Bionicles. They were having a fight. And it was, like, you know, it was <clears throat> Liba, Le- Kopaka, and Golly who were just having a duel, and my teacher was writing all the dialogue. So, you know, just drawing these epic sheets out. It wasn't really a comic. It was just, like, sheets of paper that I drew a picture on. And then there's they're stapled together, which is a comic, but there were no panels. And it was a pretty, um, pretty epic story. You still have story. it? Yeah, I do. I should post it. I should post on the forum, actually. <laughs> what is the story about? Uh, it's about, basically, there's, like, uh, 
Go it was like Kopaka and Gali land, and then Liwa is like doing bad Kopaka things, so they try to blow Kopaka and Gali land? What? Yeah, Ko Kopaka was the first Bionicle I got in Easter of 2001 when I was four years old, and I saw it on oh, the shelf. Bionicle, I haven't heard of this franchise in centuries, man. Come well, on. you heard about it last episode when we did the reading, which we'll also do in this episode. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, that was the first ever story. They like blew up Liwa because he was the bad guy or something. I don't, I don't know, man. And then, oh god, I'm burping. There are other stories, like, uh, again, they were all just, like, they were, like, Star Wars ones where there was, like, an epic story about, like, Boba Fett or something like that, and, and he was, like, uh, I don't remember what happened, man. <laughs> he was, like, going around and doing his thing. And then I told you guys where there's, there's Mega Stormtrooper, who was a guy, he's a normal guy, and then all of a sudden he just spilt some, like, chemicals on him. So he became... And finally, he could hit his targets. Yeah, except, uh, oh, I called him Mega Stormtroopers, but I think it was like my great uncle. Shout out to Albert. He was all like, hey, why don't you like make your own characters? And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I called him Mega Storm. Very creative. I know. You don't have to tell me how genius I am. But, um, and yeah, you know, he just, and he fought a robot who was a ripoff of the guy who was in. Uh, it's not Captain Underpants, but it's an, it's the book where the where the baby fights like a giant piece of shit, like literally like he he's like an he's like a I think he's like actually like a piece of shit. He's not like Mister Hanky, but he's like Mister he's like sh he's like Sheriff Doodoo or something like really stupid like that. Like uh, it was like diaper. diaper Are you talking baby. about Super Diaper Baby? Super Diaper Baby. Didn't he fight like a piece By of shit? Dave Pilkey. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure there was one that was just giant poop. Yeah. Yeah, I think no, he fought. Yeah, it was it was like it was like Sheriff Dookie or something like that, I think. And he was like he was like fighting this big piece of shit. Yeah, because he was like this piece of shit that was like, like oh my god, it it was it was deputy deputy dangerous. Okay, I don't remember that. <laughs> or, no, or deputy dude, I don't freaking remember, man. This it was a pretty epic comic at the time, you know. Because he was fighting a piece of shit, so I was like, "That's that's cool." I like I like where they fight shit, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, no. I remember that one of our teachers is pregnant, so me and my me and my friend. This is embarrassing. We made a comic about like her to be child, and it was like serious? it was like super diaper baby. Basically, we were like, "Here's here's a comic that we're gonna give you." God, I can't believe we can't believe we actually did that. It's really embarrassing when I think back on it. Yeah, but actually, I kind of guess you anyway. I guess so. Depending on how bad the you imagined the future. Oh no, it was pretty good. And then, then one of my friends had a, had a character called Lightning Kid, and he was making com. I got really jealous of him because he was like, "I'm making all these comics," so I started making a lot of comics. And then I found out, <laughs> and then I found out he was lying. He was telling me about all this stuff that he so made. So you're talking about real life here and now, basically. What time no, you this is back in the... This is, this is like grade three or four. He's like, yeah, I made all these Thunderkick comics. I was like, God damn it, I gotta beat this guy. So I was making some comics. And then I found out that, again, he was just lying. And he made like he made like one. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I was always, you know, like... I always justified it. Because I'd be like, your art's not that good. Because he, you know, he wasn't as advanced as me, right? So I was like, yeah, your art's not that good. Mine's better. You're, you're only good at writing. <laughs> You know, and we made some collaborative efforts. I have some of those. I should post them on the form or something like that. Um, but I see none of these are like my own actual stories. So I didn't have creative ideas because all I was doing was like Bionicle or Star Wars related stuff. You know, it was all just kind of like I, I saw that. Like, like I had one idea. Actually, I came up with this with my sister. We were there like little Matoran and there was one guy named Chico. He was like Mexican and had really big cheeks. He was a Mexican Bionicle. If that makes sense to you, then it should. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they were just living in, like, this little world. And then they were going to McDonald's and stuff like that. It was pretty thrilling. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, because, again, I, I don't really have, like, any specific, like, one story. Because, again, my, I didn't come up with, like, stories until, like, freaking... What was the first serious story that I actually made? Besides my comics. My school comics. Jeez, it was probably like freaking, probably Mango P.I., my god, who knows, but yeah, I don't know, that's what I have to say.
I like it. Yeah, it was a mouthful. All right. Well, you know, I guess that's like all we have to say about this topic. <laughs> I, I haven't Unless gone you consider yet. Nair. Oh, 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 shit! I forgot about I forgot about the other guy who's apparently here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. How Nair. conscientious of you? Yeah. What do we got? Um. So there's two that I can think of. The first one that was written down as a story was part of a class assignment that my teacher made me redo because it was about like Captain Stupid or Dumb Man or some lame superhero. <laughs> dumb and his conflict dumb, was dumb. he wanted to die. What? And he couldn't what? figure out how, so he what? hired James Bond no, to kill him. Are you no, kidding no. me? How old are you? When were you getting were butchered? My second grade teacher reads this and goes, Brian, you can't do this. And you... so I had to make some dumb story about my teacher as a spy. Oh, yeah, is she oh, like, is something God. wrong with you? Do you have problems? Because superhero suicide is apparently... <laughs> The best thing to do at age two. Yeah, but did you even this like know what you were doing? Me. This is inspiring me. Yeah, but you probably I... didn't even know what you were doing. Probably not. I mean, it's not like I was trying to be dark or anything. I thought it was funny. Oh, you mean you weren't the most grim, dark second grader out there? <laughs> no, that would be. Imagine I like... want the superheroes to die. It shows how real life is. Imagine how goth it would be if, like, your goth origin was like, yeah, I made the story when I was two about a superhero who wants to die, but he can't die, so he needs help. Imagine that. <laughs> like, Superman trying to off himself, but he can't. He doesn't even have kryptonite around. He's just, like, he's just, like throwing himself into stars and doing shit. Like, I can't die. Why? That was God. it. Yeah. I you thought it was hilarious. That, that's like a brilliant and idea. It's very sad. <laughs> Especially when it's like a kid's what? idea because it has like the more innocent twist, you know? <laughs> no, you don't know the, the context. Solution yeah, was, like, seriously, the just James Bond does it. He can James do it. James Bond, I love it. James Bond is the guy who's going to kill you. If you can't die, you, you can freaking James Bond. <laughs> Because there was that, and the other one was the comic that I made, which was just Honker Man. And he's a guy who has a different superpower with each instrument he uses, but he uses bike horns to shoot lasers. Oh my god. And these slime aliens jump into Washington, D.C. and steal the Hope Diamond. Based Wait. on that one time I went to Washington, D.C. and saw the Hope Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so is he, is, he, is he the guy who did the bike horn cover of A Cruel Angel's Thesis? You know what? Probably. Link, link, link. But, like, it was one of those things where you take a piece of paper and you fold it in two. And so that's the cover, the back page, and then the two sides on the inside are the comic. Yeah. And everything on page one was just the story. And then the second page was a splash page where he goes, I kick butt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're freaking advanced. So, apparently, I'm already inventing the 90s tropes of giant splash pages and angsty superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> You're freaking way ahead of your time, man. Frick. This is impossible, man. And you should sue Rob Liefeld. He probably stole a bunch of that shit from your second grade locker. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's interesting, though, that we were all just, well, you, me, and Manimal were just, yeah, do what Captain Underpants guy did. Oh, it was totally, like, like I said, that's the reason I, I started I've making actually, comics. Like, first, I've, I've actually seen a lot of the parallel, parallels in your, your guys' like comic art. I haven't seen Nair do a legit comic, but I can see that happening because I would almost think Nair is Canadian because of the art that I saw. Nair, you love SpongeBob, don't you? I didn't have cable so i never really watched it oh Are yes serious? spongebob the most american or sorry the most canadian cartoon ever made oh no i know it's not <laughs> canadian but but there's this sort of humor that's just like it's just it's just weird when i when i see nair's pen and ink sketches and i see manimals like comics and stuff i'm just like a joke comes out of nowhere and sometimes it's not even a joke it's just like Dude, this is so weird, and I just don't understand what this character said suddenly. But it's just, it's just hilarious. <laughs> it just and and you can't copy it, you can't teach it, and I can't even explain <laughs> yeah. what I mean until you see it, until you see it in memes and stuff. But it's just like, it's, dude, it's, no, 
it was it Captain just comes Underpants, like, man. Like that. Snap, snap, snaps. This this weird thing has happened. This weird thing has happened. If I could describe it in one sentence, it would be like um, Nickelodeon as I... Um, Nickelodeon when it was good, I guess. Well, again, I don't know. It's, it's Captain Underpants and Spongebob. That yes. Did it, you know. That sort of shit. Like... So you guys have been doing comics from day one. What are well, you enjoying? Since I was four or five, yeah. I was say, I guess we could kind of, sort of read and write in first grade, but you couldn't really do anything with it until grade two. So you didn't have siblings who turned around, squatted on your work, and then like shat on it. Like, oh no, no. he super did that, but like you press on. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm 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 big bro. You don't mess with me. I got around it by never showing anyone. <laughs> oh, there you go. Also do that. Yes. Yes. Freaking. I'm still You're... pissed off at the time in like third grade that my brother edited my Pokemon fan fiction. Like, it was but... like a page oh. long, and he started changing words to make it better, and I, I didn't like it. Here, here's the thing, though. Like, like, Are like a lot sure? of. A lot of my old comic ideas and, and just weird things that happened came from my sister. Just like she's also written two of my songs, and you should freaking see the other shit that she's come up with. It's ridiculous. Are you serious? <laughs> people get creative at that age? It starts that soon? God, Honestly, no. I'd say Pokemon talking. fan fiction, but it was a page of saying, man, Ash Ketchum is dumb, and my story is going to be way better. And then I you never know, wrote anything. You know, I, I believe it. I you were the original it. internet commenter. Hell yeah. The init. Trendsetter. The OIC. Yeah, I set trends too. <laughs> Are you distracted by the bike horn? Yes. <laughs> yes. I know it's great. The you know, provides me everything, like it all, literally everything. It all started when like when it when? all started when 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 Brian Wilson used the bike horn at the end of "You Still Believe in Me." You know how deep this show is. Why did this? Why? Who did this? Who did you know, this? One million views, no two million. <laughs> I'm pretty Is sure okay? it's just the song has a MIDI version and they plugged in the bike sound effect sound and just ran with it. <laughs> oh god. It's good stuff though. Mhm. Mm I think it's br so, it's brought down so the whole the whole show now. It's too distracting. <laughs> So during during your creative efforts, um, question to everyone around the table, like during your creative efforts as you were young, like was did you either have a rival or like a super inspiration that you hanged on to? That is Corin, because Corin hid everything. But nah, and Manimo, did you guys have a rival? You were like, well, like I, I, I want told to you. beat you. I told you, you know? there's that one guy, but I always never considered him a rival because I knew that I was way better at drawing than him. Ah, so. okay, so you. Okay, so it wasn't. Right. I mean, I had my friend who would say like, "I've written something new and it's super original," and it was always basically the last thing he'd watched or played and enjoyed. Oh, like him trying to tell me his story of an island where they genetically re-engineered dinosaurs was nothing like Jurassic <laughs> Park, <laughs> and this I continued love that. down I love to the that. okay. <laughs> It's a guy who's reliving the memories of his ancestors through his genetics, and it's <laughs> nothing like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. always it always happens when we don't admit it, God. It almost feels like a, like a Seinfeld plot or something, where you keep coming up with new ideas and realizing it's the exact same movie you watched the night before. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that, like, self-check... Hey, I made this new thing. Is it anything like something I've just watched? Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they bust ghosts. No. <laughs> that's uh, why. What do, what do they why... call that on TV tropes? This trope, like nothing new under the sun. No, that's a phrase. Like, uh... yeah. Well, again, that's why when I when I make stories, I try to make them very specific to me and my world. 
because no one can copy that. That's the idea behind being original. But also, my ideas aren't very good. I was just like, what if I make a, a, a story where they work in a game store and the whole gimmick is, is the fact that it's, like, my world? You know? Yeah, the, the, the one that you wrote on the forum recently was pretty good, actually. <laughs> actually, pretty different from your other stuff. Like, I guess so. I thought that would be, like, a slapstick humor at one point. Uh, suddenly, at one point... Uh, God, wait. Mm. Well, no, I, mm. I just I tried to make the most like. It is actually pretty fucking awesome. I'm actually pretty excited about it. You should write <laughs> more in this style because I, the yeah. opening scene, I was there. Like, <laughs> you were there. You saw it. I have, I have, I have the the benefit of <laughs> being on the happy hour and listening to the animal and being weird. But if I was an um, alien observer and stuff, like yeah, interesting opening and stuff and the. Uh, this is the first time in a long time that I've enjoyed slice of life chapters. Like, <laughs> oh, I think because... you like all. Yes, uh, it's good stuff, man. Good shit. I'm also pretty jealous. So I'm also pissed off a little. You know? Can you just like tone down that shit a little? Well, you can you make know? a story about your world. Ah, yes. Today I woke up <laughs> in no the land of mad inside. cats, where we made <laughs> bad controllers. <laughs> Freaking out, why did I even think about Mad Cats when Lego said that? I never even, I never even like thought about Mad Cats. Shout out to the Mad Cat steering wheel that I had for the PS1 that I used for Driver 2. You know, that is when I when I was traumatized. When I discovered that there's a Mad Cat studio. No, I was, no, oh yeah. Like, there was an Xbox pad and I was, I don't know. My Xbox pad got broken and I wanted to buy a new one. So I went on Amazon and then I was like, ha 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 cheap xbox pads that aren't original because i don't have enough money for the originals and stuff so nope mad cat is already taken then i'm like ah it's just a coincidence then i went on a forum somewhere not manga readers i was like ha huh, my new username my unique super unique and awesome username mad cat yes <laughs> already taken mad cat one taken mad cat two taken <laughs> yeah. i went up to I went up to three digits, man. Oh, All the mad cats were taken. I'm like, oh my god. Some that's other what... creature other than me has thought that that was a cool nickname. That's so, when you yeah. spell it mad cats with an S. No. No. You spell no. it with a Z. Yeah, but it's already spelled like that. But no, shout out to the time that I had like an actual literal school desk in my house. So I'd, I'd set up the school desk so it'd have like the driving wheel on it. So I could sit in the desk and also have like the pedals so I could feel like I'm really driving. I have a picture of that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you've documented your entire life, my little. Well, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> Shout out to the picture of me wearing a Cologne Trooper helmet that I got from the, the Attack of the Cologne cereal box off for pointing a Stormtrooper gun at it in my backyard at the age of 2002. <laughs> Why do I have to remember the poop journals with Frieza when you said... You <laughs> I didn't show you guys the... Okay, I didn't take any pictures of shit. But they, I realized I looked at my pictures like, I'll send you guys, they'll be funny. And then I was like, oh my god, there's piss in all these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Why did I at least flush first? Like, it's really grody to think about that, though. It's like, what the shit? You know? I have, I have no words. Yeah, there should be no words for something like that, definitely. Yeah. You know, epic tales, <laughs> epic rivals, epic origins, it's all here. We're all preaching. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we have anything else to say on this topic? No. I think I'm I, done. I think I am exiting side. <laughs> All right. I'm leaving this Take podcast that. with exactly as much energy as I came in with. <laughs> Well, that's how it goes. Anyways, Wait, you, you've, you've lost a significant amount of your satanic energy, so that's okay. Satanic energy. Anyways. <laughs> Carol, Carol, whatever. You guys know that at this point in the show, we got to do a little bit of a reading. So speaking of old stories. No. I mention this every time, but no. in, case, in case you never listen, this is a no. story that I wrote in 2007. No, no, it's no, my no, self-insert no, 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 no,
now, now. I thought <laughs> we'd run out of these. No, this one I have it. I realized I don't I haven't sent this one. So we're gonna read it. It has the rolls right there. You guys oh. freaking read it, read it visually. Oh. Tell me when you're ready, okay? Oh. It actually follows where last week, which will actually for oh. for everyone listening, depending on when this episode comes out, maybe you'll have two episodes Fuck this week. This. No, yeah, no, you're gonna read it. Don't make me. Don't make me. Uh, don't make me mad. <laughs> but okay, let's go. You guys ready? I hope you're ready. Okay. I got mm-hmm. boobs. Yes. Okay, here we go. This is my. Th- this is this is this is Thox Road Trip Around the World Chapter Four, written by me in two thousand and seven. Chapter Four: New York Dork. The gang is leaving Duluth. There. I'm sc- scrolling down. Sorry. That boobs. Um, it's time to leave. Come on, it's 12 o'clock in the morning. That's when the gangs come out, Thok. We are a gang. (laughs) They will steal my Sega and Sonic games. I drive a bullet proof truck. Will machine guns on it. (laughs) Will machine guns. (laughs) Can I sleep in the trailer part of your transport truck? Fine. Me too. I never sleep. Let's burn rubber. <laughs> <laughs> they get in the truck. TM and I go with the trailer part. Playing Sonic 2. Fuck. <laughs> Dave, stop it. <laughs> hey. No, you read ahead. You read ahead. Oh, shoot. Here. Passes him a game, Janie. You're still ahead. What? Okay, I'm sorry. The scroll wheel on my mouse is not working. I'm having to manually shift the thing. (laughs) And it's not... (laughs) What? Do you have a game, Janie? Here, passes him a game, Janie. Now that line Okay. AWA-CA92 equals, don't lose, rings, ATST-CA38 equals, never drown. Dave, drown. stop it! With an M. <laughs> <laughs> you know you start the truck. Oh, yeah. Fox starts the truck. Ah. Wah. Never mind. It's, it's seven o'clock. It's seven PM. TM and I you are in the front again. Oh, that's narration now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we are back. In we back. are here. Oh yeah, New York. Hey, it's Mary Kate and Ashley. God, this is dated. Radak bolts out of the truck. <laughs> Loser. I lost my game, Genie. I love. It mine. <laughs> no, it not. <laughs> no, it not. Yes. <laughs> go, Dave. No, go, Thok. Go, Sonic. <laughs> That's, it. That's it, everyone. Oh, wait. I realized I haven't done this in this episode. Okay, now I shattered the ears. All right. <laughs> Why is my mouse such a piece of shit? Why is the bike horn auto playing again? <laughs> He's still listening to the bike horn. <laughs> Go on, Dave. Anyways, we got everyone's favorite part of the the episode now. So if you guys have anything else to say before our lovely preach church session ends, gotta keep those good. Church brations happening with God. Gotta keep those holy good. Church brations happening with God. When we talk about church brations, <laughs> we talk about things with God. It's still going. When we're singing church vibrations. We are just burning, all of us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay.
<laughs> Isn't it so nice that we love, love Jesus, Jesus in the morning wind all day? <laughs> Jesus still believes. Oh, wait, and then you, then you could just say God only knows because there is God in the title. <laughs> God only knows what I'd be without God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh God, this, that was a song by. Uh, you guys remember Chris Hart when he made Good Vibrations? I remember. That. <laughs> Look at Chris Hart. Chris Hart on the Heart Song 2. Look up everyone look up Chris Hart. Heart Song 2 the cover. Look at his face. Chris Hart the Heart. Look how look Chris how Hart smug he looks. He looks like he just He's invented what? some like like you really mean Chris good jams. You mean Chris Hart the artist? Yes, Chris Hart. The J pop <laughs> artist from California. I need to take a picture of this funky looking bear statue that we sell <laughs> out in the garden area. Oh god. It has the creepiest human expression on its creepy ass bear face. Oh. It makes me uncomfortable every time I look at this bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god. Yeah, take a picture of that bear statue then. We're keeping the holy <laughs> vibrations up. This has been Brian Jesus son and we we've had we've had a good time, right guys? We've had a good service, good mass. It, it took me a while to get the Beach Boys <laughs> connection. <laughs> you had to sing the song, and I didn't oh. click until then. You didn't realize it was good vibrations. Because <laughs> <laughs> you said Brian, and I'm like, but I'm Brian. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Tune in next time for another exciting episode of the Manga Raiders Community Happy Hour Podcast. Maybe we'll have vacants. I don't know, but that, that cup of bacon over there hasn't melted yet. I see his face. Look at his... No, I see his... Is that the bop bop? Guys, is that, is that the bop bop on the floor? It, it's so hard to tell which part is the bop bop and which part is the face some days. I know, because his face is just about as good as a butt. Anyway. <laughs> oh! You know how those British guys are. I do. <laughs> I know how they are. <laughs> you know how they They're are. getting excited about that royal <laughs> wedding. <laughs> Josh got Bye. married. Okay, tune in next time. <laughs> Anyways, now another episode of the Chuni Chronicles. Axes cutting apart trees in the forest. The workers working forever in a grind that never ended. Like cheese would fall to nachos. The life. And soul of the workers drains as they cut down the virgin forest and destroy the land all around. Building farms and silos to generate hate across the land where the trees cry and Getty Lee sings about them. The Chuni walks in the morning Haze. The night has left tears in the eyes of many. Heartbreak in the city. Another day, she thinks. But herself, the experience never seen again. The life never known again. The time we spent together was unlike any other time. In fact, it was as if time itself had ended and a new brand new product of time was made it was in fact in these fields that the rain came and washed aside the melancholy and pain of grass that threatened the fields where farmers laid manure and waste along the bones of the dead many died but not many were known the chuni however decided this was nothing as she waltzed into the coffee place and didn't shut up when someone is trying to tell a story she just didn't shut the hell up she walked to the cafe to order 
a cup of shame. The Chuni knows this. Tune in next time.